Hey, how's it going everybody? Sarasota Tim. Coming to you from a breezy area. Hope the wind noise isn't too bad. I don't have my mic on me. I'm here at the university uh, shopping area. Last night, all of the lights are on. All the trees are decorated. Everything is finished. So tonight, uh, or one of these nights, hopefully tonight, I will uh, walk around and, and try to show you. I mean, there's gonna be a lot. It's, it's everywhere, it's all over, it's down the street. You can't just walk it, you gotta drive it. And I'll get out and walk some of it and show you guys really the best amazing Christmas decorations and lighting you've ever seen in your life. So welcome to Morning Chat. I made a morning chat over at Nathan Benderson Park already this morning that was 25 or 30 minutes long um, on 4K resolution video. And it was at 1%. Uh, 10 minutes later, we're still at 1% of uploading, so no can do. Those ones that I made down in the Keys were shorter videos, and they apparently had good internet down there or something, but I'm not, I'm not picking up that. I'm not gonna wait two, three hours, nor do I want you to wait uh, when I wanna make a video and put it up. I want it up relatively quick. So I'm at 1080p. I'm still above the 720p. Uh, um, resolution so this is still a little higher quality this is high definition but not 4k and you know you can only see 4k if you have a 4k TV or a 4k resolution on your phone which most do today so it is nice anyway um, we got all the shopping area right here I'm trying to find shade high of 87 degrees today in um, Sarasota Florida so still warm still warm they are putting together that big white roof down there. Ice skating. They had it. They have it every year here. It was across the street. It's an open air under the tent ice skating rink. That's right. And there's so many people that do it and kids that, you, you know, there's really nowhere to go fast because a lot of people, unless you get there at a certain time, I guess. But yeah, what is that going to cost to have ice skating? Uh, in South Florida. So I'm trying to stay away from the perimeter. There's speakers in these bushes. They go along the entire shopping area here and they play it loud and it's all copyright music. So I gotta kinda stand around over here. Uh, but I was gonna try and repeat some of what I said in my longer video uh, just 30 minutes ago. And that was, um, I wanted to answer a few of the comments that I got from folks regarding uh, sunset at Mallory Square. The day we got there, uh, we broke our neck to get down there, and then I broke my neck walking fast as I could, making that video walking down Duval Street, uh, only to end up right there at Sloppy Joe's, which is right near Mallory Square, after the sun had already gone down, or was just going down. But the thing is, to see the entertainment that's performed there, it starts about an hour, at least an hour, before sunset. And we weren't even close to catching any of that. It was already quite dark and falling quickly uh, because of the time of the year and the time change. So, uh, missed that. Did go to Mallory Square uh, for the offshore powerboat races and enjoyed that, uh, but that wasn't the same thing as the uh, sunset. So tried to give you sunrises and we had the clouds, so other than that one morning where you saw a little peak of it, uh, we weren't able to give you uh, a really, really amazing sunrise, which you would get right there at my, my campsite if it wasn't cloudy. The day we left, it rained all the way out of the Keys up to Homestead. I couldn't believe it. And none of that was even forecasted. Now, while we were there though, it was nice. I did hear rain in the middle of the night though. So, but we had a great time. People are talking about uh, some of the cost. Well, that's really kind of a moot point, isn't it? I mean, it costs what it costs. And <laughs> some people were saying you could have got a resort. No, you can't. <laughs> if a campsite is $200, you know darn well that a resort, uh, you might be able to find some maybe average motel, but all the ones in Key West are pretty much resorts or Airbnb type things. Uh, uh, we call bed and breakfast and, and, and whatever. But no, they're not afraid to ask four, five, six hundred dollars a night uh, because they got people standing in line to do it. 
you're not going to stay in Key West in 2024 cheap anymore. And uh, the story I was given at the campground anyway was, uh, you know, since the since COVID, that's always their go-to answer. Since COVID, things have gone up. I'm like, well, hasn't been COVID in a couple of years, so why are you still charging? Not going to argue. It is what it is. I have no regrets. I had a great time. I was able to drive my new truck down there and find out what it's like uh, towing. And I want to briefly talk, uh, talk about that. The ball with this tilt thing, I'm not going to get into too much of it. Don't worry. Don't, don't start hanging yourself. The ball on the back of my pickup truck is at an angle. It's tilted out because of this kind of a hitch system I have called weight distribution. I'm done with it. I like the fact that it's got these bars that even the, the leveling out. Um, but I'm going to have my ball, which is at four degrees now, it was at six, back to 90 degrees. Today, I'm going to the hitch place and telling them, unbolt it, screw it back on at 90 degrees. It'll take them five minutes. That part is the easy part. And I'm going to go with that. Um, I called another trailer place and they said, yeah, you know, uh, but I've never heard of anybody. We just put them on 90 degrees. I said, yeah, but there's an adjustment specifically on these weight distribution hitches to move them. You know, what's it about? I think because the Ford F-250 I have is so stout and it's already so much higher in the rear than my Toyota Tundra, that, and that was at 90 degrees, that it doesn't need to be out or out any. I think I'm gonna go back to 90 degrees. Otherwise, it's near perfect the way it towed but anybody ever tells you that you don't know something's behind you that's close to 7,000 pounds like my trailer, uh, I don't think they're being completely honest because I knew it was back there. I, I take off at a red light. I know I got something behind me. I'm not just zipping away. And when big trucks go by me or if there's any wind and the fact that the camper itself is a big box uh, that makes its own you know, it's not aerodynamic. It's not like a, a very aerodynamic shape. You know, it's back there. And so there's a little bit of a, a little bit of this. I have my anti-sway thing on there, but I'm wondering if the weight, because of that ball, is making too much weight on the rear axle of my camper, as I have two axles and not more forward or more tongue weight. Because without a camper, you see my truck, it's jacked up in the rear. It's jacked up, it's all jacked up on Mountain Dew. So I'm just gonna throw it on the hitch and if it does sag, I'll use the amount of links I need on those chains of those uh, black bars that go on there to level her and I'm gonna be done with this weight stuff, this hitch stuff, sick of it. And um, I did drive uh, 65 miles an hour at the max on the way home, 63 a lot of the ways. And uh, I got nine and a half, I saw 10 but I ended up staying at nine and a half on the way home. I did try to take it up to 70 just to see if I was gonna get sway, I was experimenting. I even got off the freeway and took the, the arms down and put one less link hanging off. And I definitely saw a little bit of a difference. So that confirms that I need to uh, move that ball. Didn't I just say we're not gonna talk about this very long? All right, moving on. So now it's about traveling to Laughlin or somewhere else. All right, I could go to Jacksonville, I can go to Daytona. I can go up to Georgia, uh, Savannah. I can go a lot of places, right? But I, I've been there. You know, when I used to have a motorcycle, I went there. That was a day ride when I lived in Atlanta. I've been to the Smoky Mountains so many times. I really don't have this burning desire. I went up there last October. You know, this was the anniversary. Someone reminded me the birthday, the first year anniversary of the Crasher. I bought it in October of last year. It's now November, of course. Uh, so it was a good anniversary um, trip. Uh, I also just enjoyed uh, myself. And it was a bucket list thing because I had been talking about it to you guys. I wanted to share some of it. I'm sorry that in my limited, not even 48 hours really, that I had, I did want to spend some time at my camp. I did buy some um, expensive steaks to cook out and use my new grill. A lot of you have been wanting to have a grill video. Uh, I tried to do all I could in a short period of time. And to, to stay any longer, it wasn't like I had to get back to work or anything. 
it was just I would have had to go and apply for another uh, loan at the bank, <laughs> you know, because it wasn't cheap down there for sure. But don't get hung up on uh, asking how much it costs. There's a website you can go on. I did tell you what it costs, but it is what it is, you know, and uh, you know, you do you. If you don't want to spend uh, over $200 a night for an RV spot, then, then don't, don't go down there. But if you want to go down there, it's a long way to drive all the way back home or up to Key, uh, Key Largo or somewhere where you can maybe save 50 bucks on a, uh, a room for the night or even an RV spot. I like the fact that I was there and it was only five miles outside of town, which was like five minutes. So I did it. Do I need to go back again? Well, it was many years since I was down there and the same thing happens every time you go. It's like, all right, been there, done that. Probably don't need to go uh, to Key West again, you know, or at least for a while. Um, when I went to Key West, the few times I have been there, a few times, I said that same thing. And when I would go back to the Keys, I would only go to Isla Mirada. I wouldn't even go to Marathon. That's almost to Key West. I would just go to Isla Mirada. But uh, guess what? That Holiday Isles Resort where the famous Tiki Hut is, is gone. It is no more. It is yesteryear. After they started out as a little tiki hut, built a bigger tiki hut, then double decked it and had the home of the famous rum runner or the Miami Vice or called the pain in the ass because they used to actually make a pina colada and a rum runner. Uh, have to use two blenders and then you pour one in a glass, you pour the other in a glass, then you pour the other one in the glass and the rest of the other one in the glass and you have layers of, of white and red, right? It was called a pain in the ass because it was a pain in the ass for them to make. Then they came out with a Slurpee machine where they could just do it. They had the rum runner here and the pina colada machine over here, and they would just zip, zip. So they went through that. And then they started putting some like retail shops out there on the deck, on the, on the, on the pier of the Tiki Bar at Holiday Isles. And they had a pool there and a beach, and it was really cool. And you could pull in and park. Well, guess what it is today? You can't even see it. It doesn't exist. And the names are, are gone. It's, it's two big resorts with some fancy shops and they got rid of all the, I guess the party animals that came there. Uh, the only thing left is that sandbar out there on the water in the channel that I showed you when we went across that bridge. You might not have been able to see it that well, but it's a huge sandbar that people like to belly up on at low tide uh, with their boats. But whatever is there of anything left of it, even the tiki bar itself, the structure, it looked like it was stucco now and made hard walls around it, which is really kind of sad because, but the money came in, the corporations came in, they said, tear all this down, get rid of all these party people just walking around. Let's put something in here that can make money and lots of it. And that's what they've done. So at least I got to see it and experience it and also experience the growth of it when they double decked it. I remember when it was just one level of the famous Holiday Isles tiki bar and they had big signs out there you couldn't miss it when you drove up i drove right past it uh when we were going down and then we looked for it on the way back and uh, there's nowhere to park you couldn't go in with that camper nothing like that so anyway the keys i've uh, been there done that probably uh because of the memories i have i probably don't need to uh, go again but you can't believe a damn thing i say right but i had a good time and I'm back. And now I'm back here in beautiful Sarasota. All the lights are here, the Christmas lights are all done. All the trees are wrapped. See those palm trees over there? They're all wrapped, the palm fronds. And last night I saw them. And so I'm gonna have to get you guys a video of what I've been trying to tell you about how amazing all the Christmas decorations are. The uh, trailer hitch, I gotta go and end this video because I'm gonna go get the ball put in 90 degrees and my truck is still connected to the camper. I'm in the uh, CC Rider, and man, was that nice to get in after driving that truck. I remember the days when I used to ride my Harley across country or up to the North Carolina mountains from Atlanta, and I would, um, I'd go so far, I didn't come home that day. I'd camp out somewhere, and I'd ride and ride these long rides, you know, 500 miles a day when I went across country. I even went 600 miles in a day, uh, multiple days. And I would get back, and this is exactly what would happen. I, would, I didn't even want to look at her. I didn't even want to own it. I parked it. I didn't even want to wash it, nothing. Just get away from me. 
because my ass hurt so bad and I was in the saddle for so long and you know the fun was like over it's very uh, you know taxing and arduous to stay in the saddle that long and then what happened 48 hours 72 hours later you go look at it oh man what a nice looking Harley I'm gonna ride that bike <laughs> and so that's exactly what the truck was like yesterday because it's it was basically like driving in the city a uh, stop and go traffic the traffic was it was rainy you had to stop that big trailer and it was um, 150 miles of the of the 350 was it it's more it's more like uh, whatever it is it's like half of it is city driving you know going down overseas highway that two-lane road at 40 miles an hour 45 miles an hour catching red lights slow traffic in front of you uh, only two lanes watching everything as you go it wasn't like a big wide open freeway and I'm traveling out to Laughlin it wasn't like that and we can go three four hundred miles and then pull into a place a loves or a, a campground and enjoy the, the night and, and do it again so when I got out of it last night and got in the CC rider and this morning <laughs> man what a car <laughs> it was it's a nice car and so easy to zip in and out around things. I can see why people get aggravated when they get behind me or any semi truck or another RV. They're like, come on, get out of our way. Cause you got a car you can just zip around in uh, so easy. But anyway, uh, I'm glad I own that, that little car. And I think I'll keep them both <laughs> because they're both very nice. And uh, today, like I said, I'm gonna get off this phone now and go get my trailer hitch done. I want to, Dadgum. I might go buy a pressure washer so I can wash the rigs. You know, you can buy those for like $99 at Walmart or Home Depot or on Amazon. They're electric and you don't want anything. Here's a pressure washer guy right over here, but he could take paint off the primer. I don't want anything that cleans your driveway, you know, that's going to tear my decals off. I just want something that can spray it off and reach up higher and maybe knock off some of those bugs. Uh, so I might just do that. Might look into one of them. Um, what else was I saying in that first video? This one's getting long now, 17 minutes. I gotta learn to put a timer again to make these videos quit. Uh, if this doesn't upload fast, it's gonna be back to 720p, folks. I can't deal with waiting forever for a video to upload. Uh, so we went over the keys, we went over the truck, I'm going to get the trailer ball put back at 90 degrees. I'm going to really, really be considering uh, going out west and trying to get past the negatives, these monsters in my mind about Flagstaff, Albuquerque, and higher altitude places that are experiencing 20 degree low temperatures right now. Uh, I don't know whether they got snow blizzards or anything, but it's a short area that you go through on the interstate, you know, to get to Nevada. So, and I do have four wheel drive and um, it doesn't matter. There's not gonna really be any ice on that freeway. Could be on the road though. I don't have to worry about a generator either because there's nowhere in this country, nowhere north of Sarasota, 50 miles <laughs> that you need to worry about air conditioning once a heater goes down because it's that time of year. So do I need it for power? No, I got batteries. Do I need it for air conditioning? No because I'm not going to be in there during the day uh, that I need to worry about it. And if I go all the way up to where I'm talking about going, or I'm going to be somewhere during the day early and spend all day there, I can go to a campground that does have, you know, full hookups. So I might not even need to take the generator. Even though I've got a payload that can take it, I might take it. Maybe somebody wants to buy it along the way, I can sell it to. I've got some lithium batteries I want to sell too. Um, some uh, blue eddies uh, that I don't need. I've got four of them. And uh, one of them can actually power my, my camper completely and the air conditioner for probably an hour. It's that strong. And so a lot of people are buying those uh, today uh, for their homes in case of a power outage and stuff like that. So that can help with the, generate a few dollars for some gas money uh, to take the trip across country because between the fuel I spent going to the Keys, which I'm never gonna complain about, 
but you can't believe a damn thing I say. Of course I'll complain about it. Uh, between that and the cost of the RV park there for just two days, um, bit into, but I wanted to go somewhere and I wanted to try the truck out before I just take off to, you know, across the country. So I might want to liquidate a couple of things uh, to generate uh, the pocket cash necessary that it will be uh, to take a trip like that. But I certainly would like to go back, see my old buddies, play some golf, hit the Colorado River, hit the Planet Fitness, hit the Walmart, hit the Riverside Casino, go to the poolside over there. Oh yeah, the memories, baby, the memories. I definitely would like to crush it.